As far back as Roman times, Scotland lagged behind England, and as late as the 14th century, there was said to be no Scottish baron who could write his own name. Scottish agriculture was primitive, and its industry virtually non-existent. The people were illiterate, and there was no law and order, except for the arbitrary edicts of local clan chiefs. The largest city in Scotland in the 17th century, Edinburgh, had a population of just 16,000. Part of the reason for Scotland's lag behind England was geographic isolation. Scotland was on the outer fringes of European civilization. England was closer to continental Europe, which was for centuries more advanced than the British Isles, so that cultural artifacts of a more advanced civilization found their way across the Channel to the English. But whatever the reasons, the Scots lagged behind the English, and were painfully aware of that fact. After centuries of conflict, the English invaded Scotland, first the Lowlands and then the Highlands. They conquered Scotland both militarily and culturally. Scots were conscious to a painful degree of their backwardness, their poverty, their lack of polish, their provinciality. Scots began to speak English, usually with a heavy accent. A society for promoting the reading and speaking of the English language was formed, and lectures on the subject drew hundreds, including James Boswell. Even such an intellectual giant as David Hume took lessons in English pronunciation, and he warned fellow Scots against using peculiarly Scottish expressions, a warning repeated both in his letters and in Scott's magazine. James Mill deliberately purged his speech of Scottish pronunciation and expressions. He moved to England and raised John Stuart Mill and his other children as Englishmen, who never heard him speak of Scotland. Nor was he unique. Demeaning or not, the overwhelming desire to pass as English and to transcend Scottish origins was symbolic of the more pervasive fertilization of Scottish life with external influences. It eventually facilitated the universalization of Scottish scholarship, which was the hallmark of the Enlightenment and the outreach of its own culture. Back in Scotland, Lowland Scots copied the English, and Highland Scots copied the Lowland Scots. Scottish farmers even used an English plow that was completely unsuitable for the soil of Scotland. In short, 18th century Scots represented a clear example of the cultural cringe. What was the result? First of all, the spread of the English language, beginning in the Scottish lowlands, opened a whole new world of literature in numerous fields to the Scots, fields in which there was little or no literature in the indigenous Gaelic language. Education caught on so widely in the Scottish lowlands that they had compulsory education before England did and developed the most extensive system of schools in Europe. Not only an educated class, but an intellectual class developed in Scotland. As a distinguished historian put it, in every branch of knowledge, this once poor and ignorant people produced original and successful thinkers. From the middle of the 18th century to the middle of the 19th century, most of the leading British intellectual figures were either from Scotland or of Scottish ancestry. These included David Hume in philosophy, Adam Smith in economics, Joseph Black in chemistry, Robert Adam in architecture, James Watt in engineering, Sir Walter Scott in literature, and John Stuart Mill in economics, philosophy, and political science. In medicine... Scots likewise moved to the forefront, not only in Britain, but also in Russia, where Catherine the Great had a Scottish physician, and in America, where Scots established some of the earliest medical schools. Scots also set the world standard in engineering in general and shipbuilding in particular. By 1871, nearly half the ships built in Great Britain were built in Scotland. Scottish universities surged ahead of English universities in science and engineering. In short, the Scots eventually surpassed those from whom they had once learned.